So uh, Richard said something about there's nobody that can be an expert. There's always an exception. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so I work as a basic admin, or as Richard referred to as ops. Um, Microsoft integration MVP, do some classes, health checking, I've seen a few environments, active blogger and all that. So my presentation is, what if you mess it up? And I bet most of you guys have messed it up, at least once. Or as a developer, you usually go, what if I knew this six months ago? Right? So there's something you need to know as an admin or as a developer, and it's about the configuration, how to clean up stuff, limiting <coughs> stuff, expanding, following best practices, and when not to follow best practices. So I'm going to talk about kind of like putting things on the edge, like really like this is what I want to know, this is what I want to do. There's always an exception, right? So um, if you want to kill me for some of the points I'm talking about, please do it after the presentation. Um, and I'm going to start off with uh, how do admins mess it up? And here's going to be the main focus, because we do <coughs> mess it up. Uh, although, I got a few slides on how developers mess it up. <laughs> it just kept on going and going, so I decided like what should be my focus. And I decided on the admin stuff. So I just deleted a lot of the developer stuff. So, <laughs> to just figure out what I should talk about. <laughs> Microsoft is doing a good job, obviously. That's why I continue working with this product. I get a challenge. <laughs> Backup job. So the backup job is obviously important. And when I go out doing my health checks, I end up at a client. So I usually stay at a client for maybe a week or two, and then off to the next one. So I've seen a few of them. I get a few answers when I ask, like, so how's the backup job running? And I kind of wanted to share it to you guys. So I took a few of the stuff that I hear when I'm out there, and I put them together. So. The most common one is, no, we do it our own way. We're going to do the backup job in BizTalk. So we have the DBAs, we have this really awesome backup job. I'm like, it's not going to work, dude. <laughs> and then, well, we take snapshots off the SQL server. Way to go. It's not going to work. Or we don't need a backup. <laughs> right. Well, then you guess you probably won't need me, since you're not having problems. Or uh, configure it, but files are deleted instantly. They're so big, it just takes too much space. Or it fails so much, so we just disable it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's true. So it backs up the database sets, and it cleans the junk in the trunk, right? It makes sure everything is running smooth. If you have a disaster, you can do a recovery. If you do it your own way, you have that transactional way the backup works. So if you just back up this now and then 10 minutes later you back up the tracking and then maybe eventually the next day you do the message box and then try to do a disaster recovery and then you call me and I'm like Tor, we have trouble well, not gonna help you I'm sorry and then you call Microsoft and they're gonna go I'm sorry DTA cleanup so these are the two jobs that you need to configure when you install BizTalk Raise your hand if you keep forgetting it. Right. I know there's going to be a lot more hands, but you don't want to admit it. I know. <laughs> the most common error I see when I do health checks is these two jobs. So A, it's not configured. Or B, it's configured, but it's not really working. So we don't want to archive anything. We don't want to do anything with the tracking. We just, we just don't use the job. So the database is pretty big. But we kind of have it as our archiving database. We have everything in it, so forever and ever and ever. Right, that's going to work. Or we don't need the data, so we don't need the job. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> or we don't know how to configure it. And uh, there's a thing called Google. <laughs> <coughs> there's a thing called Google. <laughs> And then, is the job even important, right? So is the job important? Yeah. yeah. So what does it do then? 
So it cleans up the trunk or the junk in the trunk and then it archives it, right? Although you can do some changes, I'm not going to talk about that. And then for the same one as the back of job, it fails so much, so just disable it. Even um, I'm not going to talk about it that much, but the monitoring job that came in basically 2010, in most cases it's disabled. And uh, yeah, there's a few reasons for that. I don't know why they put it in as a job. But. So basically, cleaning the tracking database and archiving it, in some cases you just decide to purge everything. You do not do the archiving. But from a standard setup, it's archiving and purging, cleaning it up. SQL agents, so the rest of the jobs running. You have a lot of jobs running, cleaning stuff, making sure everything's running fine. 20 cents, you have the monitoring job that checks for orphaned messages, et cetera, et cetera. And then you get this. <laughs> oh, we forgot to start it. Or even worse, uses too much resources. <laughs> we need that for biz stock. Or it keeps failing, so we stopped it, disabled it. Usually, this happens, and a week later, they call me. Bizduck's not working. And that can be a ton of reasons why it's not working. And it's usually because some developer, no offense, guys, <laughs> went in and tried to fix something. There's a reason why we say developers shouldn't have access to production environment. <laughs> There's a reason why Saravana implemented that event log viewer uh, logging, so we get a warning when someone went in and installed something. You tried to be a ninja, it's not working, guys. <laughs> now, raise your hand if you're a Vistok admin. I love you guys. <laughs> raise your hand if you're a developer. Thanks for giving me a lot of work. <laughs> so, and the same thing, none of the jobs were working anyway, so we just disabled it. Error. <laughs> the best one I saw. Yeah, we started every night with a scheduled <coughs> task, because it takes so much resources, right? So we don't run it all the time, just like when we feel like we need to do it. <laughs> so it cleans up everything. You even have, for those cases, God forbid, where you track body messages, the entire body of the message, there's a job that's responsible for moving that. That's one of the SQL jobs. <coughs> but don't turn it off. Keep it on and make sure you configure all the jobs. I guess most of you guys do it. So if you haven't, okay. <coughs> or especially for developers, you usually forget to do this on your developer machine. Just do yourself a favor and do it. Host security. Well, this one is my favorite. We got super admins right. And they have full control to everything. So everything's working. Right? It's easy. You have that Bizduck service user. Can log on to anything. <laughs> anything in the company. Without a problem. And if the application is not working, the host is not working, yeah, super user. Add it. Perfect. <laughs> or maybe we can use the local users. Right. Good luck with that. And then to change it from that super user, oh man, that's a lot of work. Oh, no, super user is better. <laughs> but, but we do have a strong <laughs> password for it, right? It's like, Bizdoc is really cool, and then I love my wife. <laughs> With some numbers in it. All right, very strong, good. Way to go. No, it's a lot easier when you update passwords, so we just know my password and my super user never expires. <laughs> so, don't mix different processes with the same user. You do not want your test accounts or test host users to be able to access production environments or production shares. You don't want your send users to be able to access receive shares. You kind of want to split that up. Your processing user should not be able to jump into receiving areas and all that stuff. And it's important to keep that security high. And I know most of you guys probably don't do that. Raise your hand if you split it all up. My best practice, awesome. I'll buy you guys a beer. 
Host separations. <laughs> yeah, we have a hundred hosts, so we're good. <laughs> More move. Or the default host always works, <laughs> right? Vistock server application. I love that when you get in, you do a health check, and the first thing you see is that one specific host Bistock server application. Huh. Can you change that? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. So usually during configuration, I choose to have the send port as first default host, and then I go in and add the rest. Just a tip. And then obviously the different ways of doing host separation. For some cases, you might want to have something for the specific application. Although, for me, I think the best practice is receive, send, processing, and obviously tracking. <laughs> and um, then you have the case where they have like a lot of machines, and then they have a basic server application host. Yeah, we split it across multiple environments, or multiple servers, or whatever. Still not going to help you out. <coughs> so there's something about throttling. I don't know if you guys have heard about that. <laughs> yeah, there's a different limits like threads and all that stuff. And if you try to tunnel everything through one host, yeah, it's not gonna work. Well, it's gonna work, but it's not gonna be fast. And then tracking hosts, I love this. Oh, they all do tracking. <laughs> we just put allow host tracking and everything. So there's a golden rule to that. There's one per message box plus one in redundancy. So in a regular environment where you have more than one basic server, you have at least two tracking hosts. So separate the host based on purpose and tasks, receiving, sending, whatever you're doing. It keeps it a lot easier for me to administrate. Let's say I get in, we gotta do some stuff, we're upgrading all the applications or whatever, and I wanna stop just receiving. I still want the messages to process and finish. I just want to stop every receive port. So instead of going in and stopping all the receive ports, I can just stop the hosts. And the rest of the process will go. I can implement or install the new applications, change the paths, and then start it up again just by starting up the receive host. Makes life a lot easier for me. Although I know developers love to make my life hard. <laughs> Please do this for me. Artifact tracking. This is something that I usually, I get a lot of comments on this. I'm really, really, really hardcore on this. And I know in some cases, yeah, you can have some artifact tracking on in production. Um, all of my clients, and there's a lot of them, they don't have it, and it works perfectly fine. Although you feel more comfortable as a developer to have that debugging information in production, okay, I'm not gonna mess up with it. But if I get in there, it's gonna be turned off. I usually say you don't go online on a web page and then you expect to see the debugging information on top of the web page. Oh yeah, I see they have problems somewhere. Oh, okay, yeah. You don't want to see that, right? So keep debugging information out of production unless you need it, something's failing. Turn it on, check it, okay, this is what it is. Turn it off again, right? This is the typical comment from developers. So why do we need it? Is it because you're implementing bugs in production? <laughs> Come on. Is it your backup? No, we want to we keep a copy of the message. <coughs> oh, we have tracking data? <laughs> Where's that? Is it a copy of the message? Awesome. We don't need that anymore. Come on, guys. Or you have it on some of your applications, because I, mean, I want to feel safe. This is my critical application, so that's why I want to have debugging information on them, because I know I'm going to have to debug them eventually. Right. You don't need it in production. And this is the worst comment I ever got. <laughs> what do you think happens when you turn off debugging or turn off tracking? Performance is better, right? Improvement in performance. While you have it on, less performance. So artifact tracking, I say may impact performance. In most cases, it will impact performance. Maybe not drastically, so it will be a problem for you, but it will definitely give you better performance by turning it off. Probably. So this is my favorite topic. 
I'm really into problem. It's like if I want to have a good time in the evening while I went to bed, I start on Facebook and I play with Trotling. <laughs> <laughs> and then my wife's like, what are you talking about? You're sitting up there like, yeah, whoa, awesome. How many Trotling steaks can I get in like one minute? I don't love it. And then you have this one. So I'm like, what? So have you ever turned off Trotling? I remember saying once that, I wonder why Microsoft made that. Was it because the drop down would look so terrible with just two options? That free is like, oh. And, um, and then I was at the BizDoc Summit in Seattle last year. And a huge client over there was talking about that they turned off Protlink. I almost fell off my chair. It's like, are you kidding me? And um, I don't remember all these specs for all that stuff, but it was a crazy setup. And what basically happens, or can happen if you turn it off, and you hit that boundary, that threshold, and just keep on going. And I've had that a couple of times when I'm trying to beat my students when I have my class. And my database goes into like recovery state. It's just dead. And I reboot, and I reboot, and I reboot, and maybe in an hour or so, it's kind of back up again. And I go right back and I turn on properly. So in most cases, Unless you have Microsoft <coughs> helping you out doing it, don't turn it off. I would say never turn it off. <coughs> Since Microsoft is here and they were the architectural review of all that stuff, I gotta say, talk to them. <coughs> yeah, and then you have people, yeah, yeah, whenever we hit a trial thing step, we just expand with more resources. Come on, guys, you can change thresholds. If you know how it works, you can actually <laughs> utilize more of your resources. I keep coming in and I see people, oh yeah, we've been on a throttling state. So more incoming rate, exceeds outgoing rate, or whatever, some memory stuff. And then if you just, if you just check, you have memory problems with throttling, but you still have 80% free memory. Maybe you should check something, change some thresholds. And we do, and voila, applications never run that fast before. And we haven't had a throttling state in, in a month. Right? Go in and change the thresholds. And if you don't know how to use it, go and play with it in your dev environment so you can mess that one up instead of the clients. And then, yeah, no, our setup is running perfect. 32 cores, 128 gigs of RAM, one application going through one orchestration. <laughs> awesome. Obviously, you're not going to have any problems with crawling when you overkill hardware. Uh, and then you have this one. Oh, we don't have any accelerators here. There's no throttling happening. What are you talking about? This is not a car, it's a piss dock. It's not a plane. Well, obviously most of you guys know what throttling is. And then you have this. Yeah, I see someone using it, playing with throttling with thresholds. So who, who is like really comfortable about throttling and threshold? Okay. There's a few that should go and play around in their dev environments. It's really easy when you get it. So throttling has a lot of benefits. It will prevent complete stops in your environment, but you can also use it to limit throughput. So you're communicating with a legacy system, you can limit the resources available so it doesn't hammer that system and crashes it. Databases. So I've seen a few different cases. 100 gigabyte, is that too much? <coughs> no, no, you're safe here, it's good. It's terrible. <coughs> or even my spool size, 300 rows, is that a lot? No, but how about 300,000, right? You guys know what the spool table is? Uh, I guess some people, yeah. What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the spool table is basically, everything goes through the spool table. So, if you have a big spool table, obviously things is going to slow down. So, but if you want to talk more about the spool, we can do it after. And then we have plenty of free space. We have like 50 terabyte disks here. We can go really big. It's no problem. Or they're separated on different machines. See? It's working. It's good. And then this one. This is my favorite. When you come into production, and you go to the tracking database, 
where you store the orchestration debugging data at the debug trace table, and it's just huge. They're like, yeah, yeah, it's big, really cool. Do you know what it is? No, I have no idea, <laughs> but it's big. <laughs> this is not like your car. You buy a big one for, yeah, I'm not going to go into the depth of that. So large databases impact performance. Keep them small, make sure you process stuff fast. Don't bring in a 500 megabyte file into BizTalk. And then obviously monitoring, one of the key functionalities that's missing in BizTalk. <laughs> Unless you have BizTalk 360 or someone, something else. Even the SCOM is hard to set up. So, yeah, no, we don't have any admins. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's good. Or, nothing fails here. I've heard that a couple of times. And why did you call me? <laughs> oh, we had some problems. <laughs> and then, oh, there's tools for it? What, what are you talking about? Bishop is sexy? Yeah, we log into the server every day, checking it, refreshing. I hate it when you log into a server and there's like no connections left for me. <laughs> Or I would check it once a month, go in, clean the hub, yeah, terminate everything. <laughs> Got developers. Monitoring is just not the hub. You have a lot more places. You have the event log, you have uh, the performance monitor, so you use PAL, Bisoc 360, you have AIMS, you have HP, you have System Center. There's a bunch of tools. And this is one of my favorite. So, yeah, we print from the Bisoc server. Who does that? Raise your hand. So who go in and disable the print spooler service on your Windows server then? Raise. So one, two. So that's like the first to-do list when you get back. <laughs> yeah, we have Visual Studio installed. <laughs> Way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use Outlook as I export the message and then I send it to someone. <laughs> Smart. But we don't need the entire SharePoint installation. <laughs> and then obviously having all my installations file. Yeah, I installed BizTalk two years ago, but I still want to have the files <laughs> in my temp folder together with the rest of the important stuff I cannot delete, which is in my temp folder, right? I usually go in and I say, oh, your temp folder is pretty big. Is it okay if I delete it? No, no! <laughs> right. The server is meant to run BizTalk and not your job. So other artifacts may interfere with performance. So get rid of the stuff you don't need. Disable the services that is not meant to be run together with BizTalk. Go in and update the registry with the right settings so it knows it's going to be a message hub. And then hardware. So there's, there's hardware. Then you have the regular client. Everything's OK. And then you have the cheap ass clients. And then you have those overkilling clients. Like money's not a problem. So when you get that so ten gigabyte Windows drive, is that not good? Yeah. Should I have more? Uh, okay. Or oh, we want 120 gigs of RAM because of the memory leak. <laughs> Come on, fix the memory leak then. Well it's in the applications development, you know. Right. Or we're just used to having all of these services, or all of this RAM, or all of this CPU. So when we upgrade it, I know we're going to drop 100 applications, but still it's so good to have all these resources. I can go and brag to my friends. Have you seen the, the hardware we have on the service at work? Holy. Or we scale by ordering new machines. <coughs> Should we scale, guys? Yeah, let's scale. We're scaling. We don't really need to, but we're just doing it. Or as long as it works, it's good enough, right? As long as it's not crashing every day, it's good. So hardware is important, but don't go crazy. Don't take too much. Do some assessments before you actually start going wild. And don't be a cheap ass. And then this is my favorite part. <laughs> the developers never really mess it up. 
I'm just kidding. I do. That's by design. It's by design, yeah. <laughs> Event logs. There's more of us than there are admins. <laughs> I'm a good runner. Have you raised your hands? I I'm so small, so I can just like. I'm a snake. But this is my favorite. I feel like every now and then, developers, they lend by this. Hey guys. You know that new admin? I hate it. Like spam the event log. <laughs> Everything in the event log. Got a file. Process the file. Looked at the file again. Finished the file. Yeah, I finished it. Come on. I don't need that information. Or every time you do something, processing something, I just write it to the event log. I'm not kidding. Who does this? Raise your hand. <laughs> Start running. <laughs> so, and then who uses the event block? Come on. I do. And the rest of the admins here probably do, unless some developers are spamming the event block. And you, you just open it up and you go, oh, there's no way I'm checking that anymore. It's like my worst nightmare, and I have it like once every now and then. It's like I start up my computer and it crashes, and I open the event block, and it's just whole junk. So in that case, it's like Microsoft implemented something new and it's just, Windows started, now it has started. I'm not kidding, it started. <laughs> I don't need that information. And then, like, logging everything. And I mean everything. It's like, my wife broke up with me. <laughs> I don't need that information either. It's a... <laughs> if I would write general errors there, it might be good. But you have to define what general errors is. If your general error is the message failed somewhere, maybe it's better to put that error in BizTalk, in the group hub, and then be creative and write something that we can understand instead of X path, blah, blah, and then 3456 AB failed. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So keep it clean. Unless you need the, need the data, well, you can put in some of it. I'm really strict. Some of it might be useful. The rest, junk. And then this is my favorite. So I'm not, not a developer. I know based on development is drag and drop, but <laughs> <laughs> this kind of makes it so strange. Like, how do you manage to make so many bugs when you're just drag and dropping? My daughter does it well on the iPad. I don't know if it's a Microsoft related problem. But this one, when I hear someone saying that, I go like, what? I have one client that made their own adapter, and it's terrible. And uh, every time I see someone making an adapter, there is an exception, but in most cases, it's like, are you kidding me? How does it, I have to install it like this, like schedule tasks and then start a service to initiate some PowerShell just to install the adapter. And then stop BizDoc. And then this one. Oh, what's that? What was that coding? Oh, let's just, let's just write some C Sharp and some .NET. It's a lot easier. <laughs> and then persistent ports. Oh, I love it. Let's just make a bunch of them. A lot. And then full debugging. So all that stuff is going to my tracking data. Oh, I love it. No. And then I love to spam the group hub. I know this is going to fail. So here's how you fix it when it fails. So you just export the message, send it to this person. <laughs> Come on, guys. I know I'm an admin, but that's not what I do. I don't, go in, I don't love to get to work and then go into my group hub and like every minute, F5. Yeah, message failed. Yeah, work. <laughs> it's not happening. And then this one, every now and then I think developers, like, they live by this. Why should we give them good messages when it fails? Let's make, let's make it deeper. They don't know how to code or drag and drop. <laughs> and this continues. I'm not done. <laughs> Nobody ever reads my code anyways, right? So I can just mess it up and write whatever I want. Comments, never heard of it. 
And, and then, my favorite, when I usually, they make a new application and I, do you have a test message? Why do you need that? Are you going to test if I've done my job correctly? Are you a developer? No, 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 but I kind of want to test like throughput and perform. No! <laughs> and then I go, but did you test it? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course I tested it. <laughs> test it, test it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Raise your hand if that's the case for one. Come on, you're allowed to. And then, let's just put everything in one application. Like all of the stuff we have, instead of making 10, let's make one big one. Oh, I love it. So you get in and then like, and, and for me, I get in for short periods. Huh? So if, if things are really, really bad, I spend hours and hours just figuring out how to split up the applications based on that one application you have. The developer goes like, yeah, so that is for that and that and that and that and this. So just let me know if you need any help. I'll be all the way on the other side up the street in another building and you won't get my phone number. And then this one. <laughs> Let's just use the Bistle config file. If it fails, it's the admin's work. Right? Or let's store my password in pair text in my configuration file. Because I don't know how to use SSO. And then I come in as an admin. Shouldn't you use the SSO? Are you a developer? <laughs> exactly. Why are you laughing? It's true. Yeah. <laughs> Who haven't said that? Are you a developer? I usually go in, yeah, I am. Well, then how do you do this? I have no idea. Do you? <laughs> Some bad development may impact performance the way I do my job as an admin. <coughs> Support, you can mess it up so bad that even Microsoft will say, no, we're not touching this. <laughs> Scalability, like I have this one case, it's a really, really big client, it's huge. And as I said, I'm no, not a BizTalk drag and drop developer. And, um, and pretty much the most important information that's from me to my government, obviously everybody understands this is tax stuff is going through BizTalk, which is awesome. Except everything is going through one orchestration. <coughs> it's a small country, we're just five million people, but still, one orchestration. So scalability of that, good luck to me. Durability, so not only is it my tax that goes through there, but some other stuff that's like 595 megabytes. That's going to take a lot of resources and slow down the rest. And obviously, I started writing this in a Word document. And on page 10, I kind of decided to just stop this. So I just took in the most important and then wrote, and so on um, should be on. <laughs> and uh, I'm still not done. <laughs> orchestration. I've had this case. Oh, we don't use orchestration. We just use pipelines. And these were actually two. Like this was from one student I had in one of my classes. And um, the next one, uh, he was uh, using just the orchestration. So I said, hey, you guys should talk. <laughs> Let's make an integration right there. And then this one is also one of my favorites. Let's debatch in the orchestration. Raise your hand if you do that or have done it. Raise your hand if you're going to do it again. <laughs> okay. And this was the older one. We don't use pipeline, only orchestrations. And then this one. Again, persistent tools. More and more and more. So it's really important to kind of prevent all this, especially if you want to have artifact tracking turned on in production. You've got to avoid using too many persistent points, too many shapes. You will write a lot of stuff to the database. That's not necessary. In some cases, you have to have a few of them. In some cases, you don't. But I'm not a developer. I'm not good with that drag and drop stuff. <laughs> so use orchestration the way it's meant to be. Same thing with pipelines. And please don't let the orchestration be the bottleneck. Don't put stuff in there that shouldn't be there. Last slide. Any questions before I run? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, how do we want to die? Slow and painful. A traditional white funeral, or shall we just throw you in the tents? Yeah. Uh, regarding host partitioning, have you ever partitioned for a high, uh, um, high performance in batch processing? So rather than partition across, you yeah. break it up the other way? So I have my own way of doing it. So I put on the Technic Wiki my naming convention for hosts, where that is part of the naming convention. So if it's like high availability or high throughput or whatever it's meant to do. And then you obviously go in and change whatever settings you have to do for that to make it high throughput or not. Slowing down, for instance. Why is it bad to do back to the orchestration? Because I don't understand it. So it, it's basic. We can talk a bit about this afterwards as well. Basically, you're putting all those messages in the spool table. Yeah. And when you enrich that spool table with your love from that message, it gets big, yeah. usually. And if all messages coming into BizTalk has to go through that spool table, imagine that being very big by all your love with debatching and the orchestration, mm -hmm. then taking out that file, transferring it, working with it will take longer time. Mm -hmm. But I guess there's some more rules to it or some more reasons why you shouldn't. At least that's my best reason why you shouldn't do it.